Praise God. Well, it is good to be in the house of the Lord today, amen, with all my friends. And I recognize all you dads out there today. We appreciate your love and your sacrifice. In fact, we have pulled out all things today. We have prepared hot dogs for you as you leave today. Amen. And we have, we have a car show down here uh, for you to enjoy some games happening down there. But we want you to enjoy this uh, quick little moment down there, uh, enjoying uh, a time with your, your family. Um, we especially appreciate all the bad dad jokes that we have heard. Where's Barry Dotson? There he is. He's our resident bad dad joke person. And Pastor Darren's away today, so I have to fill in. So I have a few for you today. <clears throat> bad dad jokes. Here we go. Singing in the shower is fun until you get soap in your mouth. Then it's a soap opera. <laughs> I've started investing in stocks, chicken, vegetable, and beef. Someday, I hope to be a billionaire. At the gong. Why do fathers take an extra pair of socks when they go golfing? In case they get a hole in one. Oh, yeah. And finally, I thought the dryer was shrinking my clothes. Turns out it was the refrigerator all along. All right. <laughs> Here we go. We also recognize your infinite wisdom, like this phrase is, were you born in a barn? Or hey, does money grow on trees? Can you hear me now? As he raises his voice. I'll get back to you on the second Tuesday of next week. And my dad always says this, where's your shovel? And finally, am I talking to a brick wall? How many of you heard that over the years from your dad? Yep. yep. Well, how many of you remember being on a playground uh, as a child and you were bragging about your dad or giving some kind of description about your dad and you did it with authority, you did it with um, some confidence that my dad could beat up your dad, right? And the, your buddy would say, well, my mom could beat up your dad. And then it would go on and you would say, my grandma could beat up your, your dad. And my grandma who's in a wheelchair could beat up your dad. And then finally, my dead grandmother could beat up your dad. Well, how do you describe your heavenly father today? Today's message is called Abba, Father. There are all kinds of different descriptions that people give Whenever they're trying to describe their heavenly father, you'll uh, think about some people that maybe you have run into, and they give t credit to the big guy in the sky. What a description, right? The big guy in the sky. I think there's a lot more ways that we can describe our God today. Let me tell you a little bit about my dad. My dad's going to be 80 years old next month. And I will go back home to Pennsylvania. We will celebrate his 80th birthday. He's still running his car repair shop. Mom and dad have been married for 62 years. We're going to throw some photos up here. I want you to see those. Mom and dad have been married for 62 years. That, that's my favorite one right up there in the corner. I love her and I love him. That was on their 62nd wedding anniversary. Um, last year, they'll have 63 years um, on July 30th of this year. So there's dad. There, I took my dad on a hunting trip down in Texas just two years ago. There's the family, my sister, my mom and dad, and my, my two brothers. And every year for 32 years, we have go been going to the Indianapolis 500 and just returned uh, from that with my, my whole family. So what an enjoyable time. I love my dad. And I'm going to be honest with you today. I walked through this congregation today. I have walked some journeys with you this past year. And I know that you don't have your daddy with you. And my heart aches for you this morning. I'm not going to call out any names, but you know who you are. And as much as I love my dad, I'm not prepared for that day. 
and I'm going to need your help. With the hundreds and hundreds of funerals that I have done, I will need help through that day when God calls him home. Now, with my dad, I've never, I've, it, there have been times that my relationship was not as strong as it is now. From the time that I was born until I was up to about the age of 12, I did not have a very tight relationship with my dad. And I yearned for that. I desired it. I even remember as a teenager writing my dad a letter um, after he came to know the Lord whenever I was 12. He woke up on a Sunday morning and he said, I'm going to church with you guys today. And I'll never forget the day that he got up out of that pew and he walked forward and he surrendered his life to Christ. And my friends, everything changed from that day forward. And as a teenager, I remember seeing this as a young man, and it radically changed my life because it radically changed my father's life. And I am so grateful for my daddy today, whom I love and I adore. And I, as a teenager, what I was saying, I wrote a letter to my, to my dad. It was an English project in high school. Dad, I love you. And you are my hero. And he is that today. More important today, how would you describe your, re, your heavenly father? I hope he's more than the big guy in the sky, right? That you have a relationship with you. That he's actually your hero. That he, you understand the great sacrifice that your heavenly father put up for you so that you could have salvation and that you could have life and have it abundantly. What words would you describe to use to describe your God? Well, there's lots of movies that try to describe um, God. You can probably think of some of those right now. I've got a video clip, um, and I want you to just enjoy this real quick. It's Hollywood's um, idea of how to describe God. Check this out. Remember this? Fun. Let's have some fun today in church, okay? You feel the Hail spirit girls. moving. Hail Mary, what's up? Well, Jerusalem's become a real drag. Everybody hates me. Uh-uh, not that guy over there. Who, him? They all say he's different. They say he's really weird. We don't care what people say. To us, he's always there. Really? Could make me tell a lie to my God. my God. I gave my God my word of honor to be faithful. And I've got a you best be believing. I won't be deceiving my God. As a matter of opinion, I think he's tops. My opinion is he's the cream of the crop. As a matter of taste, to be exact. He's my ideal, as a matter of fact. No muscle-bound man could take my hand from my God, my God. No handsome face could ever take the place of my God, my God. He may not be a movie star, but when it comes to being happy, we are. There's not a man today who could take me away from my God. Take it home, ladies. There's not a man today who could take me away from my God. Give him some of that deep shoulder action. There's not a man today who could take me away from my God. Woo! 
Praise God. I think I saw the Holy Spirit moving down on Richard right here. He was jiving. He was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God is good. We should have fun in church, right? Amen. Amen. So I, I hope you remember more than uh, this little video clip today about your God. But I want to I wanna start by this, doing this today. I want to give you um, some descriptions of, or names of God, and then I want you to think of one, and I want you to shout that out. So I'm going to start. Get one in your head. I'm giving you a warning. He is Alpha and Omega. He is my righteousness. He is the Word of God. He is the King of Kings. And he is the Lord of Lords. Okay, it's your turn. Shout him out. Come on. Come on. Come on. You done? There's over 200 names for God in Scripture today. And I want you to know, somebody said to me the other day, um, Pastor, I don't know how to pray. And I challenged them, and I said, if you take a little bit of a study, and you would just study the names of God, and spend one minute in prayer on that name alone, you would have several hours just invested in prayer. And it goes this way, God, I praise you. He is Alpha and Omega. So here's some, here's some names. But also the characteristics that go along with those names. He is Elohim, the God of incredible power and might. I said, the God, because there's lots of gods out there today, but he is the God of incredible power and might. Can I hear an amen today? He's Yahweh, meaning I am. What do you need God to be for you today? He says, I am. Do you believe it today? He's El Elanon, which means God Most High. Once again, there's lots of gods out there, but he is God Most High. He's El Shaddai. I heard somebody shout that out right over here. He is God Almighty. He's Jehovah Rapha. He is God who heals. And I want to tell you something. Today, when I came into this worship center, I have a foot infection, and that's why I'm sitting on this chair. But during communion in the first service, I claimed that blood of Jesus over me, that he is Jehovah Rapha. He is my healer. Does anybody need a healing today? Let me see your hands. I see your hands. Come on. Something wrong in your body today. It's not operating the way it should. And you need to claim Jehovah Rapha over you today. His name's Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is my peace. How many of you need peace today in this world that is broken? It is a broken world out there. Now, if you watch the news, you are not going to receive peace at 5 o'clock when you get home. Turn it off. Don't listen to it. Crawl into your prayer closet and go to Jehovah Shalom, who is your peace. One of you got it. Now listen, I want you to know it in your knower today. That God is your peace. I think your knower is an organ, internal organ inside of us. It's that part of you that knows something without a doubt. Do you know him as Jehovah Shalom today. And then finally, the title of our message, he's Abba. He is our Father. And we break this down in the most infinite, intimate Hebrew term. It means he's our daddy. It means we get to crawl up in his lap. Here's some things I know about him. He invites us to call him daddy today. He invites us to throw the door wide open. He embraces us in his arms. He invites me into his presence. He listens to me and he 
loves me. Do you know him as a child of God today? Do you know it in your knower, deep down within you, that God is Abba? So many names, we could have a whole sermon series, several weeks on just the names of God. But today, I want to concentrate on three characteristics or names that I haven't even mentioned yet. And they're, they're not in any sequence, they're not of any more importance than other names. I would challenge you to just Google the names of God in Scripture, and it will give you a plethora of names that are listed in Scripture. But these are three names that whenever I started seeing my dad build a relationship with his Heavenly Father, I knew that it was something that I wanted to take on into my life as well. So, my dad knows him as Jehovah Nisi. He protects. In your, in your notes, he protects. He's Jehovah Nisi. The word Jehovah Nisi is, means he is my protector. How many uh, saw the uh, Golden State Warriors win the championship again uh, this week? Any Golden State Warrior fans out there? I see your hands. And in their arena, there are banners that said, uh, we have won this uh, in, uh, s- several years ago. I think this is their fourth now, right? But also, how many Av fans do I have out there today? Any Bronco fans? All right, if you go to, is it still Mile High Stadium? No. It's still Mile High Stadium for me, okay? So, but in that, in, in that stadium, there are banners that say, we have won the championship. We are the victors. And uh, in the uh, ball arena, it's now named, you'll see banners in ball arena that say, we are the champions during these years. Well, God does the same thing for you today. He is your protector. He stands before you and protects you. But as he gives protection and victory in certain areas of your life, he takes a banner and he waves it around for all the world to see and saying, I have the victory over this situation. In Exodus 17, 15, we see this uh, this, uh, first uh, introduced to us, the Hebrew name for God in the story of the Israelites when Moses was taking his, um, the people across the desert for 40 years, they traveled, they, jour- they were on this journey going to the promised land. And there during the journey, they had something that no one else had. Do you remember? They had the pillar of fire, right? So whenever God said, you need protection, this pillar of fire would show up and he would protect them from the enemy coming against them. And that whenever it was time to move, um, the cloud would show up in, in the night, and the, or the fire would show up in the night as well, and the cloud would show up during the day, and they would know it's time to move, and it was God's protection. Let's get moving, and let's move towards uh, what God has for you. A pillar of fire by night and a cloud of smoke daily, the very presence of God. My friends... He is that perfect protector today. How many of you had a dad that protected you whenever you were a young child? Let me see your hand. I had that experience. Man, I got myself into a situation one time where my daddy had to show up. So I played baseball, and uh, playing baseball, um, we would always have these pickup games at the community park. And there, there was usually some guys there that were a little bit larger than me, and I remember my dad, he gave me this brand new baseball. And he said, now, son, I want you home at 5 o'clock. Um, you can take your new ball, but I want you to bring that ball home at 5 because mom's going to have dinner on the table. Well, on the way through, uh, on the way back, I grabbed the ball, and uh, these older boys decided they were going to gang up on me because it was the only baseball that they had available that day. And they didn't want they didn't want, they, they didn't want to stop so, they took the ball from me, and I showed up at the house without the ball. Well, my daddy decided we're going to get in the car, and we're going to drive up there. And I was afraid. I thought it was going to be ugly. But here's what happened. My dad showed up in the middle of that field, and he said, this is my son. 
And I want you to know, I don't know what situation you are in today. But you may need your daddy, your Abba Father, to show up in the middle of a situation and say, this is my daughter. This is my son. I am Jehovah Nisi. And you will not mess with my child. Amen? Amen. Come on. Now, here's the rest of the story about my dad. Old dad, it may have been ugly, but new dad in Christ, at the end of that conversation, it wasn't heated, it wasn't ugly, there wasn't a show of force. He took that ball and he handed it to a young man that my dad's family knew very well. And he said, I want you to bring this ball back to our house when you're done playing tonight. And I want you to deliver it to my front door. Let me tell you what happened. At the end of the evening, went out to the front door, and that ball was placed right there. And your guy's going to do the same thing for you. He's got blessings beyond your wildest imagination. He is Jehovah Nisi. He is your protector. You may need protection from something today. Now, more important than my dad, look at Psalm 91, 1 through 13. If you hear something in this scripture, I want you to shout out an amen. I want you to shout it out with confidence and with authority that you believe it about your heavenly father. All right? So I'm going to read this. Listen and absorb and shout out when you hear something you like. Come on, Richard. Here we go. You who sit down in the high God's presence. Spend the night in the Shaddai's shadow. Say this, God, you are my refuge. I trust in you and I am safe. That's right. He rescues me from the hidden traps. He shields me from the deadly hazards. His huge outstretched arms protect you. Under them, you are perfectly safe. His arms fend off all harm. Now, I don't know what Marvel character your, your, uh, your hero is, but God is much bigger than Iron Man, right? He is your protector. Let's move forward. Fear nothing, not wild wolves in the night, not, nor flying arrows in the day, not disease that prowls through the darkness, not disaster that erupts at high noon, not even others, even though others succumb all around They drop like right and left. No harm will even gaze you. They drop like flies. Pretty gross, huh? Yeah. Yeah. You'll stand untouched. Come on. You'll stand untouched. Watch it all from a distance. Watch the wicked turn into corpse. Boy, you remember that scene in uh, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark where they, um, in the presence of God, they melt? They're going to melt, right? Yes, because God is your refuge, the high God, your very own home. He invites you into his home. Evil can't get close to you. Harm can get, cannot get through the door. He ordered the angels to guard you wherever you go. If you stumble, they will catch you. Their job is to keep you from falling. Amen. You'll walk unharmed Amen. among the lions and the snakes and kick young lions and serpents. Now, I'm not recommending you to go over to the zoo this afternoon and kick a lion in the face. Right? That would be foolish. My friends, God is our protector. Do you know him as your protector today? I want to pray this prayer over you today. And I want you just to um, reach your hands out just like that. And I'm going to pray over you, Jehovah Nisi. Lord, help me to recognize the spiritual warfare that's all around us. And to be aware of the enemy's battle tactics. Give me or give us the strength to fight while 
flying your banner over me and claim victory. You are my Jehovah Nisi. And I thank you for my brothers and sisters who are here in Christ today who will raise that banner with me. This victory belongs to you, and we will lift your name high in the face of both physical and spiritual attacks from the Satan. You have sovereign authority in all. Thank you that we can follow you with full assurance that you are Jehovah Nisi. Amen. Now let me hear you. Come on, we just won. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Victory. He is my protector. Amen. Amen. All right, I want you to get that down in your knower today. That's that part of you that just knows it. Let's move on. Let's look, um, let's look at that uh, number two in your, your bulletin notes. Um, he provides. He is Jehovah Jireh, which means the, lo- the Lord provides. Amen? Yes. Now, how many of you believe that even during a time of inflation, hello, or recession, that God is going to be your provider? Amen. All right? I'm not depending on the government to show me a gas voucher. I'm not depending on my government to send me some money. I'm depending on Jehovah Jireh to be my provider. Amen? Amen. All right. Let me just say this. We were financially in better shape as a church during COVID years than we had ever been in the history of this church. I can see some of you staff shaking your head because you know it. Whenever we were shut down, we were financially in better shape because he is Jehovah Jireh. We weren't depending on anyone to bail us out. Satan was coming against us, but we were pushing back the gates of hell. And the kingdom of God was advancing even during COVID years. Amen? Amen. He is Jehovah Jireh. Yes, give the Lord a hand. That's right. So, no matter what we're facing today, he is Jehovah Jireh in so many other ways beyond just financially. He provides spiritually. He provides physically. Amen? See that ankle right there? I'm believing. I'm believing that I am healed. He is Jehovah Jireh. I couldn't walk on it two days ago. You can ask Pastor Matt. I had to stay home on Thursday because I couldn't walk. Today, during communion, just like I told you at the 8 o'clock service, I claimed that blood over me. I'm 99% healed right now. Look, it's moving. And I believe that I'm going to be dancing before I leave here today. Amen? Jehovah Jireh, he provides. He provides emotionally. He provides relationally. Uh, spiritually and financially. Many of you um, need to know God as your provider today. This name is seen in Genesis chapter 22, 14. It first shows up in Genesis with Abraham. He had to face the greatest test when he was asked to sacrifice his son Isaac. Do you remember the story? It went up to the mountain And God provided a lamb, a ram, um, for the sacrifice. And God uh, is providing for us today as well. Having come through this, Abraham named that place, the Lord provides. He is Jehovah Jireh. Now, like Abraham, often it seems that God tests our hearts as well. He wants to know whether we're willing to lay down everything before him, before he opens the doors of provision and blessing. And the question is, will you be found faithful? The name of the Lord, your father, Abba, is Jehovah Jireh, which means he is your provider. So before you leave today, I want you to know this deep within you. 
to get it down into your knower that he is Jehovah Jireh. So come on now. Declare it with me today. He is Jehovah Jireh. Nothing is too difficult for him. Jehovah Jireh. Let me pray this prayer over you today. How many of you came in with a need today? Anybody have a need? Financially? Physically? Spiritually? Relationally? Emotionally? I covered all of you. Come on, raise your hand. <laughs> yeah. Let me pray this prayer over you. Hold your hands up before the Lord. And receive. Lord, I declare that you are our provider. No matter what life may throw at us, I know that you will come to our rescue and you will come to our aid in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. I, I was supposed to go and get blood work tomorrow morning to see what this infection is. I'd love to be able to walk in there and say, I am healed. Would you believe that with me today? Yes. He is my healer. Our third name is Elroy. Look at your neighbor. This is the name that God is described as the one who sees. Now look at your neighbor and say, Elroy sees you. <laughs> Isn't that fun? So much fun. Like, come on. Elroy sees you. That's so much fun. I love having fun in church. Is it okay to have fun in church? It's all right? All right. All right. Listen, your boss may not see you. Your parents may have overlooked you in so many ways over the years. Your coach may have overlooked you, but God, Elroy, he sees you. And the second part of this is he not only sees you, but he wants to promote you. Amen? Amen. He sees you and he wants to promote you. I love this. When does God promote? Look at 1 Peter 5, 6. When? Well, here's the scripture. It says this. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God so that he, God, may exalt you at the proper time. What's the prerequisite to being promoted? Humble. So many people in our world today think we're entitled. Oh, I'm, I'm a... Son of the king, I'm entitled. And God's saying, um, I'm waiting for you to um, lay yourself down, to give it all to me, and then I will use you greatly for the kingdom. Also seen in Luke 14, 11, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Here's something I've always said. And I believe it in my own life. I've always said that when a person surrenders themselves, their gifts, their talents, their whole life to the Lord, it is then that God sees you and then will make room for you, taking you to places that you had uh, never dreamed were possible. Two perfect examples of this are seen in the Bible. When God saw Abraham's situation, he acted on his behalf because Abraham had a heart that was after God. Remember the story of Abraham having no children? And he is promised, I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to make your family great. And Abraham was told, and I will make you a great nation in Genesis 12:2. And I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and so you shall be a blessing. And Abraham's like, I don't know how that happens, but he stayed faithful with God, and you know the rest of the story. And then we have uh, the story of David. 
known for being a man after God's own heart. In 2 Samuel 7, 8, it says this. Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, thus says the Lord, must be King James, thus. I don't, is that a word that you use often, thus? No. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pastures, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people Israel. Now, what if David would have rose up and say, God, don't you see me? Why do I have to be following these sheep? Now, if, uh, following sheep's not a real pleasant thing to do, especially on the back end when you're following them. There, there's things that sheep do. But David remained faithful to God and at the proper time because he humbled himself from, being in the, from following the sheep in the pasture. God was preparing him, testing his heart, and watching him to be ready for sitting on that throne. Amen? Amen? God saw him, and God promoted him at the right time. And so, my friends, God sees you today. He sees you right where you're at. And he knows, and he's watching and he's waiting, and there is a day coming when he's going to promote you when you surrender your gifts and your talents and your very life because then it becomes for him, not for us. Does that make sense? Yeah, surrender yourself to today. God sees your situation and I want to pray this prayer over you today. God, I thank you that today that you are your Elroy. God, you see us. You know us by name. And you know me. You knew me when I was in my mother's womb, Lord. And, and Father, today you have a plan and a purpose to prosper me so that I can promote you and, and push forward the kingdom for you, Lord. All for your glory and honor. Amen.